All right guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're gonna be starting to make a chessboard. Now this is going to be kind of a multi-piece part project. Uh, so right now what we're gonna be doing is just starting by making the actual chessboard itself. You know, the checkerboard pattern, and we're gonna be making it out of end grain, white oak, and walnut. Uh, mostly because those are two of my favorite woods and I've got plenty of eight quarter stock laying around So I should have enough material just in the shop here to just make this board as it is from there The next part of this project will be making all the chess pieces that are gonna go with the board now This is something that seems very uh, very intense in my own mind You know, I definitely there's a lot that goes into making chess pieces and most of them are made by CNC's so I think it's gonna be really interesting to just hone my lathe skills a little bit and try making all those different pieces on the lathe. The final part of the project will then be making a box that will then hold the chessboard as well as our chess pieces. Uh, that's more of a decorative display box that I'm still not fully sure what I'm gonna do for the design there. I don't know if I want the chessboard to be stored inside, on top, something like that. Uh, but overall, that is the plan. So we're gonna start by making a chessboard, then we're gonna make the chess pieces, then we're gonna make a nice storage box for everything. And so the stock that I'm using for this project is extremely important in the way, in the reason that I'm using it, is because it is slightly over two inches thick. So typically eight quarter stock is just under two inches thick. You know, it's usually one in 15, 16, something like that. But this stock that I have here, this white oak and this walnut, is they're both about one and an eighth to one and a quarter inch thick in some places. So what this is gonna allow for is for me to get a perfect one and three quarter square out of here, no matter what is kind of around it. So it gives me plenty of room to work to make sure that I can get that one and three quarter thickness. Whereas with typical eight quarter stock, it can be challenging to get one and three quarter square stock out of it because sometimes there's defects and that they have to work around. So because I'm doing this as an end grain board, I'm gonna have to do two glue ups. And realistically with any chessboard, you're gonna have to do at least two glue ups. So we're just gonna start by making eight strips of alternating colors. So four white oak, four walnut, and then we're gonna glue those into one solid chunk. Then once that glue up is all cured up, we then go through, flatten that, and then cut it into little slices and glue all that together in the end grain orientation. And that'll give us our end grain chessboard. Now the trick is here is we need to figure out right off the bat how long each of these sections that we're cutting right now needs to be in order to get all the pieces we need out of it. So for my final chessboard, I know I want it to be two inches thick because anytime you're dealing with end grain, it's already an inherently kind of a weak direction to have your grain oriented. So the thicker it can be, the better off you're gonna be in the end. So two inches should be plenty of thickness for this thing that's not gonna be used as a cutting board. And so knowing that my final thickness is gonna be two inches, the math from there is super easy. So I know that I'm gonna have that two inches on there. I know that I have an eighth inch table saw blade, so I wanna add that onto there because we're gonna be using the table saw to make all of our slices later on. I'm gonna add on a little bit of extra material so that in our final refining of the piece, we can actually remove some material to make sure we get down to that two inch thickness. So I'm gonna add about a quarter inch there. Then I just multiply that by nine. Now the important thing here is that I'm multiplying that by nine rather than eight like we actually need because having extra material is always good. So the calculation is actually pretty simple. So we're just doing nine times 2.25 and that, that gives us 20.25. So I'm just gonna round that up to 21. So I know that each of my lengths I'm gonna be roughing out here and milling up needs to be 21 inches long and that will give me plenty of excess material here.
Okay, so we now have all of our blanks set to two inches square on all sides. We've got a couple pieces here where we didn't quite hit that two inches, we're just under it, uh, but it's close enough to do what we need to do with the, this next step here. So when we're doing this first glue up, what we need to make sure of is that our pieces are exactly one and three quarters of an inch wide, so that's, that's gonna set our width, but on our thickness, you know, so how thick we want this final glue to be, it needs to be just over one and three quarters of an inch thick, so we actually have some room to sneak up on that after the glue up. And as any woodworker knows, unless you're using something like dowels, dominoes, biscuits, whatever, for your glue up, you're never gonna get a perfectly flat glue up every time. Your pieces are always going to shift around and move a little bit. So we wanna make sure we have enough excess material on this glue up that after it's all glued up, we can go through and flatten it again. So what we're aiming for here is we want, on the width of our pieces, we want them to be exactly one and three quarters an inch. On the thickness, we're going for just over that. So we'll probably add at least an eighth of an inch because that should make up for any inaccuracies in the glue up. All right, so our first glue is done and it went together you know, pretty nicely. Using the table saw to get these blanks completely squared up and you know, down to their nice thicknesses and all that worked out beautifully. It's looking really good. The one thing that's important to mention about doing glue up like this that I know is gonna be turned into an end grain board later on is it's extremely important to make sure you get good glue coverage. And typically if I was doing something like this, I would lightly cover every section in glue and it would be just fine. You know, you really, you really wouldn't have to worry about it with all the long grain connections here. Even if you don't have very good glue coverage of the whole area in there, you're gonna be just fine. Because I know that I'm gonna be turning this into an end grain board, we're basically gonna be taking all this nice long grain connection that we have here and cutting it into little two inch sections. And so we're gonna lose a lot of that strength of the connection. So it's extremely important that these pieces are as fused together as they possibly can be. So as you guys saw, I kept my bottle of Type Bond 3 in my hand and any areas that were seeming a little bit thin, I just added more glue and just kept wiping it on until the entire surface was completely saturated with glue. That's the biggest thing is anytime you're doing a glue up that you're gonna be turning into an end grain board, make sure you have the best possible glue coverage because that's going to give you the best results possible. Okay, so we now have what looks like just a giant butcher block cutting board because as we know in woodworking, everything is a cutting board until it's not. So now we need to go through and do is clean up all of our glue squeeze out. So I've got my really crappy Stanley handyman hand plane here that I'm going to use to clean up all this glue squeeze out. We're then going to use the drum sander to get this down to exactly one and three quarters of an inch thick all the way throughout the panel here. Then we can go through, cut it into a bunch of small sections and glue it back up into what is actually going to be our chessboard.
so there we go. We actually have the chessboard actually mostly done now. So I want to say that it came out perfectly and everything went just hunky dory, but that machine right there, I hate that thing. I've talked about this lots before. It has so many issues with it. And that, and one of those issues is actually shining through on this chessboard. Because the problem with any kind of open end drum sander is that the open end is always gonna lift up. You're never gonna get a perfectly flat thing coming out of it, which sucks because it's a pretty useful feature to have, but when not done correctly, you know, not built with a rigid enough structure, uh, like this machine I have behind me here, it's not ever going to be accurate enough for the stuff that we need it to be. So what's happening with these pieces is that on the sides here, they're mostly flat. But overall, this board ended up getting a twist to it by using that machine. This is a very expensive machine, not super impressed by the fact that it does that, but it's one of those things I just have to learn to work around. So if I just have our pieces sitting loosely together, we have some small gaps in that, that are showing, and I fully expected that to happen. Again, I know the weaknesses of this drum sander that I have, I was fully expecting to have this. But luckily, when I actually put on some clamping pressure, it pulls everything tight enough together that I think it is gonna work for what I need, you know? There's no obvious visible gaps in that, and any that, are, that do show up in the end can very easily be filled. Now the backside is a slightly different story because we have all our clamping pressure on the front trying to close up all those gaps that are in there. We do have some small ones opening up on the inside here. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Again, this is gonna be the bottom side of the chessboard, so you're never gonna see it anyway. Not that big a deal. The one thing that I did kind of screw up on here that I fully thought about this when I was getting into this project and I forgot to actually do it when I started making it. I wanted to leave it so that our end pieces, so this piece of white oak over here and this piece of walnut would have been slightly over one and three quarters of an inch uh, wide. Then when I was cutting the panel like I have it today, I was, I was gonna take the first two pieces off of, the, off of this big glue up uh, before I got it fully thickness down to one and three quarters. That would have left a little bit of a wider perimeter around the outside of the chessboard here that I then could have cut off with the table saw, track saw, whatever, when we have this glue up done. That would have just cleaned up any little errors in that in there. But what we have to do now before we can do this glue up is we have to put in some kind of alignment. Because if you guys have watched my channel, you know that generally for glue ups, I don't use any kind of alignment in them. I talk about this quite often when I do glue ups. I don't think that having adding in any kind of alignment is super necessary because that's the whole point of, you know, things like the drum stand or the planer is after you have your panel glued up, you pass it through there, it cleans up any issues in it. But with a glue up like this, where I need each of these pieces to stay precisely where they are right now, where I have them in the clamps, Obviously we need some kind of alignment because the last thing I want is for one of these pieces to move out of alignment when we're doing their glue up so that I lose my nice checkerboard pattern here. So there's the chessboard all glued up. The dowels worked lovely. All I did there was just drill four holes in each piece, put a dowel in the outer ones, and then you know alternate it all the way through. So all of our pieces lined up perfectly when we actually went to start clamping them together. 
So that worked out flawlessly, exactly as I hoped it would. Yeah, we got plenty of glue surface in here, so I'm not at all worried about it. And so overall, just as much as I can check right now, it is looking good. The one thing you don't want to do with an end grain is do what I normally would do and go and rub my finger over all the edges to make sure that they're fine. I started doing that on this side here, then I remember that I'm working with end grain. And if you rub the glue into the end grain, you're gonna screw up the board uh, later on. So I don't, so I gotta be very careful with what I do with this right now. We're already gonna get a decent amount of glue getting sucked into that end grain, but all again, it's not that big of a deal because we are gonna be sanding through a decent amount of that end grain anyway, using the drum sander tomorrow. So all that's left to do on this project is we're gonna get this out of the clamp so we can then pass it through the drum sander a few times to flatten off this, this end grain section. We'll then go through and square up the edges, just barely taking any material off, either using the track saw or the table saw, one of the two will probably work. From there, we'll go through and build the frame that's gonna go around the outside, so we're gonna be using some eight quarter walnut for that. I've got some cool design ideas that I wanna utilize on there, so we're gonna mess around with that. But we're gonna be doing that in the next video on this project. So there's probably only gonna be one more video for this project because I think that I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with this first part of it, these two glue ups, is I'm just gonna condense those two days work into one video and I'll put an alternate video out for the day that I am working. But hopefully by Monday, we've got a completed chessboard and then we can move on to a different project or just doing something else with this same project. So again, everything's just kind of up in the wind. It's super exciting time right now to just kind of be in the shop, figuring out what the heck I wanna do each day. So that's a really fun thing. But anyways, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.